It's official. Camera and flask episode. Who knows what? Um, for some reason, it says, please stand by. So let's see what that is. Do you guys see that as well? Let's find uh, out from the peeps whether or not it's saying that. I see but we're I said, live. Yeah, we're on. Yeah, I was, and then it said, you are live, and then it says live, and it says, please stand by. So what is up with that? See, I thought everything was just beautiful. And then here we are. So let's see if that works. Hey, y'all, pouring some old Forrester and Cola. Uh, yo, um, dog. No. Does anybody, do you hear us? Do you see or hear us? <laughs> wow. Amazing. Now, who am I being asked to stand by from? Should I say end stream? Or will that, that screws stuff up on YouTube, doesn't it? I think yes, it's yes, all yes. totally fine. They can huh? see us. They can hear us. I think it's all totally good. fine. Yeah. Thank well, you, Sky good. London. Perfect. So I don't know what's happening on YouTube side, but I see a black screen that says we're live, and it says please stand by. So uh, you know it's zeros and ones, and we just go with it. So it's a beautiful thing. So welcome everybody. Welcome to my good friends, Ben Barden and Caleb Pike. This is episode one, and uh, we are here to talk about IBC, new kit, new gear. Uh, this is kind of our NAB and Cine gear smashed into one. We didn't have a lot of big announcements earlier this year, and here we are with a lot of stuff rolling in. So first and foremost, uh, welcome, gentlemen, and let's figure out what is in the bottle that will be in a glass or some sort of container. Caleb, you'll tell us your sob story in a minute. And uh, let's start with Ben. <laughs> All right. So this week, I'm still sort of in summer mode. Mm. So I am drinking, which is an acquired taste. This is not everyone's cup of tea. I'm going to mm. have a bit of Retsina, which I've sort of developed a bit of a thing for. Put Particularly it in front of your because. Face. Okay, I'm going to get, go. get the AF. And then to... rotate, rotate. Yeah, come on, baby. It's gonna. Oh. We're gonna get there. Oh, there, there we it go. Is. Whoa, that's almost like a Caleb Pike. Oh, look at your. Yeah, look at that. So this yeah, is this on is, the glass this is and everything. Yeah. Super super cheap from mm -hmm. my local little. This is about. This is less than three dollars a bottle. So this is a Greek uh, a Greek wine, which is also made as well as with grapes, also with uh, pine sap. Wow. So but it's kind of like this. It's. Is it is it a wine? So it's not like a grappa. It's not made from um, no from it, the skins and stuff. No, it's it's grapes, but it's got this pine sort of taste to it. Which <laughs> what what is the percentage there? I'm looking at this pour. Is it like wine or is this is this no, liquor? It's, it's like wine. It's eleven percent. So it's like it's no, it's oh, wine. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm no. So uh, it's it's a quite an acquired taste. It's got a really almost vinegary start. And then mm. it's quite good and really summery, refreshing. I've got into it. It's become a bit of a thing, uh, particularly because I'm tight and it's uh, so cheap. Isn't that so kind of how I... you just, is that kind of how you describe me? I start. I have like a vinegary <laughs> start, but then uh, I... <laughs> okay, fine. And Caleb, okay, uh, but, but what you're about tight you? and cheap, so right. right I'm, the right. Tight and cheap. I'm not tight and cheap. Um, no. <laughs> That is that is a uh, go ahead. I that is weird. Let's go ahead and find out what you're drinking, Caleb. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, this yeah. week we're getting really exciting, and uh, we're drinking from the mega jug again because I forgot to bring <laughs> something. I, I keep having ideas as to what I can bring over, and then I yeah, like ah, oh, gotta get over there. So someday we'll sort all that out. But look might, at might that be a bicycle. Light. I'm well, drinking and I'm drinking and and taking in and bathing in that beautiful sunlight behind wow. your right shoulder. That nice so. slightly green. Yeah, but it looks good. It makes me no, feel like I'm gonna go outside and have a drink. So it's yeah. a beautiful thing. Good. Um, okay, uh, I have uh, from from uh, from the motherland uh, a Balveni. Uh, it's it's a peated, so it's called peated triple cask. It's a 14 year and they're, you know, they're a Highland uh, whiskey. So they generally don't do much on the peat. 
I love their, um, I love their, whatever you, what do you call these things? Boxes? Um, they, they really explain where everything comes Linder. from in the process. They're beautifully designed. But, you know, it's, it's kind of still about Venny, so it's, it's still got that sweetness to it. But they put a nice peat on it. I had one uh, when I was in Scotland called Peat Week, which I liked even more than this. But this is the one that they had at the Duty Free. So I picked up a bottle of this. And it's uh, it's quite delightful and uh, definitely has smoky, you know, elements to it, but it's no Lafroy tenure. So there you go. So, gentlemen, let's cheers and then let's start talking about some gear and make sure we're monitoring the chat. <laughs> That's obnoxious. But there we go. All right. Cheers, yes. everybody. Cheers. Mm. Delish. OK, beautiful. Mm. There we go. <laughs> mm. I should go full you screen see. for that. Wait, keep that. Keep that. Keep that. Hold on. No, oh, one more time, one more time. There you go. You got to hydrate. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Back to the four up. So we'll see how things uh, get along, girls and boys, but we are hoping, fingers crossed, that Lightstream behaves itself. It was pretty good this morning for the Gearbox live stream, but at some point it just seemed to crap out. And I'm learning that, uh, you know, when you're not inside with the Hangouts on Air, Things can go wrong at times, and probably, Caleb, you know this more than anybody else because you've dealt with so many connections and OBS and all that kind of stuff, but you're the rock star of this stuff. Oh, I don't know about that. At this oh, point, you you've got more experience than... No, I don't. Come definitely on, more ridiculous. experience than I do. Ridiculous. Okay, so IBC 2019. Uh, let's, oh, let's acknowledge what people are drinking. Um, yes, Ben is in Prince's house. Um, because I so, am a princess. No, pr what yeah, you expect? No, yeah, he is. He is. Uh, <laughs> nobody's <laughs> nobody's in that house anymore, unfortunately, which really sucks. So he's he's uh, there. Don't touch shit, David says. That's funny. Okay, about about the the live stream. Don't mess with it. Uh, I'm not going to say what 360 grad said. You can read it if you want. He's, <laughs> uh, he's, and then uh, and then Larry has already started in uh nevada with the a7s3 unicorn news not happening my friend oh no no oh no 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 david says that your flask is a, a star destroyer it's amazing okay good <laughs> well here we go we're, let's get into it so gentlemen lots of announcements i think we're going to start with the camera that um probably makes the most sense to have a discussion about which mm. is the Canon c500 mark ii some people yes. may disagree, but until Sony has a press conference and until Sony, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on, announces something new, the C500 Mark II in many ways is the camera to have a discussion about. Um, you gentlemen have probably read up on the specs. None of us have mm -hmm. used it. Nobody's used it um, except for a couple of DPs. So what are the thoughts on the C500 Mark II? And you would think I'd go to Ben first on this one, but I'm going to do curveball, and I'm going go oh, to I'm gonna go to Caleb, and I'm going to get your initial thoughts on this camera. Um, if I'm honest, when it first was announced, I, I actually didn't really look it up much because I'm like, well, it's you know, going to be $20,000 and have some good stuff and work for some people, but you know, it's another cinema camera from, from Canon. Um, I was just thinking like a, 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 a pro version of the C200, which in a way it is. And then I started hearing stuff and I looked it up and uh, we talked about it on the phone. I didn't know what the price was. I just knew some of the basic specs. Uh, but the more you dive into it, it's it's really amazing that this is camera is going to exist and that Canon made it and is selling it. Yeah, that's, that's the amazing, <laughs> yeah. that's the amazing thing. Um, is going back to Ben's, yeah. Ben's comment about Sony and Canon and going back and forth. Mm. Um, I mean, wow. It sounds more mm. like a Sony. If you just look at the specs, mm. more of a Sony thing. But yeah, amazing. Resolution, like five axis image stabilization, full frame, 4K6 DP. It's just insane. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Impressed. Impressed. Interesting. I would love to see that trickle down to kind of yeah. the stuff I, you know, play ball mm. in. But careful, careful, start, Caleb. I don't know. Careful, Caleb. Don't let's not get too crazy here. This is Canon we're talking about, okay? Uh, um, yeah. It's a good start. It's great. Great yeah. news for everybody. Okay. 
Ben? So I agree wholeheartedly. I'm also slightly annoyed because there's no way that we're getting any updates to the C200, which we, we all kind of knew was that was the case. It's it's the first time that everything on the wish list is in one box. Hmm. It really is just everything, the full frame, the 6K, hmm. uh, the stabilization, the, the codex, proper codex in there as well. Mm-hmm raw in there as well it's it's everything it's just yeah it's amazing and the price point is it's fantastic i was reading eric's um thoughts on it on you shooter and he was he was made an interesting point that at the time when the uh, c300 mark one came out and everyone you remember that was all really hyped and then the spec came out and everyone was moaning about it and the price then was sixteen thousand us which is exactly mm-hmm. what this is coming in at which i thought was an interesting point um and that how much now that seems like pretty amazing value for what's in that camera yeah i mean i think that the big news on my end and that you know there's some things we see a comment in here who made a comment um first of all travis just made a comment. He, I think he has to get going. He also says that the SD833 from Sound Devices looks very cool, but it's four grand. Um, so it's kind of like the, I guess we that mini Scorpio or whatever. Um, but he's going to keep the 633 until the market requires the upgrade, which I think is a very good thing to talk about because that has a lot to do with what we're seeing with cameras now too. There's no reason why just because we get a full frame 6K camera that you can't go and shoot 100% of your jobs on an FS7 II or a C300 Mark II or even a smaller camera system. Um, but I think, you know, oh, Harrison, by the way, I don't understand why it does not have 120 frames per second with no crop. That's a deal breaker for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, here's the deal. I say this and I will say it forever until the day I die. There will never be a perfect camera. They will never put every feature in one camera system. Um, There will be a 120 frames per second in there, but I just don't think you can get 120 frames per second in 6K in RAW. Ben? Do we know what what the crop is? I don't know. 120. Bear bear in mind. Right. What? Exactly. So we're we're talking about a full frame camera now. So if we're talking about crop, we're getting down. Right. If, uh, so yeah. did you say, uh, Caleb, that the crop is Super 35 for 120? that's what I saw, but I, I don't know. I mean, that's I, I'm pretty amazed. admirable. Yeah. If it can do 4K 60 full frame, that's amazing. Because, like, it's it's all about heat. And uh, apparently the stabilization is a ton of heat. So the yeah. fact that they're giving us what I'm seeing, that's impressive. I don't Harrison know. saying it's Super 16. Oh, Maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Well, at least if, it's not 720p, folks. So, well, I'm pretty happy with 60 <laughs> at 6K is pretty impressive in full frame. But mm-hmm. um, Sky saying the IBIS was the best bit. I'm not sure if it's in body image stabilization. I think it's an electronic stabilization. Sensor stabilization. It's sensor. So it's not. It's not floating, right? It's not got like a. Well, it a, could be. Maybe it's just it the, is. the sensor is stabilized. They didn't say how, right? These know. comments are ridiculous. Um, I think, uh, so let me just echo wannabe films. So I bet the C700 buyers, are there any question mark? <laughs> are really about yeah. the C500 Mark II? I well, saw that from yeah. wannabe, so, yeah. So I think, you know, Caleb's comment at the beginning of the show and then sort of what I want to talk about kind of goes both ways. Yes, we want to see a trickle down for sure, but the trickle down has kind of happened in the C500 Mark II this is the first time in a long time that um, Canon is blatantly cannibalizing a higher end camera system, in my opinion. So yeah. this C700 has a tremendous amount of R&D. First, a super 35 millimeter camera, now a full frame camera uh, as an option, probably the one that most people would get if they got it. And at this point with the C500 Mark II, is anybody gonna buy the C700? based on the specs of this camera, I think it would be very few and far between in terms of um, that kind of stuff. How do you guys feel about the form factor, by the way? I, I love it. And I, I, the other thing that was really interesting, um, which we haven't mentioned in the, the headline specs on this thing, 
is that mm. it's got a user changeable lens mount. So you no longer have to have that to make that decision or you're, you're not having to send the thing in. So you can use it when you're kind of running and gunning you're using Canon's autofocus lenses and you've got that incredible AF system. But you can stick the other mount on yourself in minutes. Yep. Yep. It's a very, it's like four, four screws, that's it. You switch the thing over, all the electronics are on there and then you can run PL. That's yep. so that camera now sits in between those two worlds, I think, and it'll be interesting to see sort of what kind of productions it gets used on. Yeah, so there's a lot of talk about the C200 kind of being like a, a dirt cheap Alexa Mini because it has a, an internal raw codec, right? Uh, with mm. cinema raw light. Um, but there was no real easy way to PL mount it. Sure, you could use an adapter, but it it's an EF to PL mount adapter, and you're still hanging on that questionable lens mount. The yeah. biggest problem for me, and this is just a little bit of a rant, because I'm allowed to rant a little bit, is when the original C500 was introduced, you could buy that camera with two mounts. You could buy it with a PL mount, or you could buy it with a locking EF mount, the Cine mm. EF mount. And that was a standard on that particular camera. They then made it available as a send-in upgrade, I believe, on the C300 Mark II and on the C700. But the main problem that I have is why didn't Canon make that a standard EF mount for all of their Cinema EOS cameras? Because it's far more robust. It's robust like the locking E-mount that you have on the FS7 II. Um, it's robust, of course, like uh, PL mount. And the advantage to that style of mount is that what you're doing is you're taking the, the weight off of the lens mount where, you know, where it's being attached. So if you put a 70 to 200 28 lens on there, you're not going to basically take that lens mount and put it out of collimation, which is basically going to create situations where part of your image is always going to be out of focus no matter what you do. So I think that... Um, and, and now they're charging more for that locking EF mount, which I understand it has electronics in it, but it's going to be like $2,200, I believe, and it's like $1,600 for the PL mount. I think I agree with you, Ben. I think it's fantastic that Canon is letting you now, just like you can with the Alexa Mini, you can change your mount um, and you don't have to send it in. But I, I do think that it is, you're paying, you're paying a lot for that. Um, but this is the first camera in a, in a reasonable price point, too, where they have an extension where you can put a V-mount lock battery on there. I think that's a big deal, too. It, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But just going back quickly to the lens mount before you talk mm. about that, that other, the other modules that are available mm. for it. Mm. The thing that I think that it will, not necessarily that people will do it, but I think people who are investing in a camera, um, a camera system who are maybe kind of seeing their career in the ascendancy and they're, they're, they're maybe shooting um some corporate work they're shooting some promo stuff some commercials but where they're really wanting to get into is doing low bid budget features and then getting up and up and up i think having that that um barrier removed is going well you know is this camera system just going to work for this part of my work but being able to have that lens mount and then be going into using proper cinema glass and, and seeing if that becomes an accepted camera system on those kind of bigger projects higher budget projects as well it, mm. I think it's just a psychologically, even if you're, even if you never do buy that mount, and you always use it with EF. Having, you know, in here, that that camera system can grow with me to some degree. Mm. I think it's a very smart move. What about you, Caleb? How are you feeling about form factor, the way you can build out the camera, and just sort of um, this camera in general, where it sits in the market? Because it is in that weird price point now, mm. which doesn't is almost non-existent. It's starting to become non-existent. This ten to twenty thousand dollar price yeah. point. Yeah, I, I, I'm just over the moon that they're kind of making the decisions they're making. Like how modular it is, mm -hmm. is really mm -hmm. exciting. I mean, I'm I just now I've been scrolling through the pages of pages of stuff that they have for this camera. Yeah. Um. So you can build it however you want, and uh, I think that's really cool. Instead of like buying a buying and later regretting buying a C two hundred B. You know, yep. you've got options, which is really cool. Um, I just don't my my 
yeah, really, really happy with it. I just really curious. I just can't stop thinking about the tr the trickle down. Like, what happens with future C two hundred or C one hundreds, if at all? Yeah, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. They clearly have to come out with another camera, which may not be full frame. Yeah, that is going to sit in a different price bracket below this, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, whether or not they do that anytime soon remains to be seen because I think they want that rental market. They want that camera that can kind of do it all, which this camera can kind of do it all in a lot of ways. Um, but, you know, if I was starting out with doing corporate production right now and I was churning out content every single day, this would definitely be a camera that would be very high on my list in terms of consideration for many reasons. And we will complain about the fact that it's $16,000, but it's a pretty amazing camera for $16,000 at the moment in terms of all of the features you're getting, internal RAW. Let's not forget that it is full frame. So while the Alexa, uh, I mean, the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K is an amazing camera, it's not a full frame camera. So um, you have to consider that if full frame is important to you. I don't know if it's as important to me as it is to some people, but um, having that flexibility of buying into one camera system, which is full frame Super 35 and 16, is pretty amazing. Um, there's just so many things that I think it can do that um, we'll have to see. But l let's can you just uh, bring up uh, Caleb Chris's comment here? to me about uh 6k versus 8k where, where is that i saw something up there uh chris uh, yeah where'd it go uh it's not that far where is it i saw uh, something here we go. Um, should we be putting a pause on buying oh, that, yeah. any of these recent 6k cameras mirrorless or cinema and just wait until 8k for acquisition 4k acquisition to full frame to HD 4K acquisition to full HD delivery is already pretty great. Mm. I was going to bring that up how like this camera is 6K and I thought there was all the stuff with that Apple event that like, oh, there's this pre-production 8K camera, but it wasn't. Mm. It was all 6K. And maybe maybe the 8K thing was a little little too early. Do you think like we're going to be 6K for a while? Because there's a lot of 6K happening right now. Apple's, a lot Apple's of, HDR yeah. display is 6K, right? I believe so, yeah. If Apple yeah. and Canon and everyone else is just like 6K, I, I don't know. I don't think it's a resolution that we're going to deliver to. That's just my oh, personal so. opinion. Oh, absolutely not, yeah. But, yeah, but I mean, um, 8K, that's so far away, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would imagine I, we're not going to be doing like 8K Blu-rays for no. a long time, much less 8K anything else. No, but I think the, the, the conversation really goes back to what you just read about Chris's comment. We're so used to a 4K to HD workflow where we can punch in 200% to anywhere within that frame that was captured, right, right. UHD, 4K to, to full HD. Um, we can't punch in 200% when we're going 6K to 4K. So you have to go 8K to 4K to get the same level of flexibility and freedom in post that you get when you go 4K to 1080. Um, but I think that it's a compromise, and it clearly has been decided by many manufacturers that they're going to make the full frame jump before they make the 8K jump. And yeah. that seems to be where they've done that. I think it clearly means that we're probably going to see um, – we, we could probably crystal ball this and say that the EVA 2 is going to be a full-frame camera. Um, and, and, you know, it would be silly for Panasonic not to do that because of the market and what it's doing. And if they do an EVA 2 that's full-frame and it's under 10, if it's in that seventy-five to you know $10,000 uh, price, $7,500 to $10,000 price bracket, mm. then they've got a camera that really starts to be um, if they can fix the dang menus and the monitor, yeah, they could do plastic. Product. Yeah, exactly. They, they can make got it a out camera that that is, you know, starts to become unique within that sub ten thousand dollar. That being said, let's get this conversation started with everybody in the chat. What do we think? I'm jumping to other stuff later because we're in the camera thing. What do you guys think that Sony's going to announce? What have you heard? What's uh, what's our deal here? We can get a little rumory. Hmm. 
Ben. <laughs> Everything I know is the from gem. So. Oh, wait, wait, okay. hold on a second. Hold on. I do want to mention it says digital filmmaker says, does 6K mean all of our external monitors are rendered useless? No, because we've no. been using 1080 monitors with 4K for years now. And so it just means that we need to finally get to the point where we're monitoring on 4K monitors, for goodness sake. Come on, catch up, you and monitor. While, while, we're, while we're doing this little side note, I've yes. been trying to find, I, I want a big, big production monitor for here in the studio rolling around, all wireless, you know, all this kind of thing. And mm. I cannot find, it's either 4K, large display, 4K yep. actual resolution, yep. uh, but there's no HDR and 4K. That's the ticket. Mm. Nowhere. You can have one or the other. There's 1080p displays all day from small HD, Atomos, others. You're talking about cost-effective ones that aren't six to, uh, and, like, 20 well, to yeah. Any Something yeah. under... Even five well, grand. Five grand. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like exactly. Grand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's it's crazy. So that's probably why what is it, Apple and their new ad uh the neon, like all that stuff. Anyway, random thing. Yeah. Random. No, random. I think it's important. Um so wanna be films. The FX six and FX seven rumors are interesting. Not sure about the naming, reminds me of my old HDV camcorders. Let's not talk about fourteen forty, okay? Uh, so I'm not talking about those funny shaped pixels right now. Let's not get into that. Want to be films. You're, you're making me go back to days. I don't want to remember. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, so bad. It hurts so bad. <laughs> well, I remember HDV. I had to deal with that crap for DVD authoring. Um, you, you, everyone here probably, especially want to be, I know, uh, had those nights where, you stayed up all night rendering out different settings to try to get the best de interlacing. Don't even, like, don't even stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. I have heart palpitations. I need a defibrillator right now. All right. So FX six FX. So here's the rumor. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to get into rumor mongering a little bit and then we'll, we'll get into the conversation. The rumor is that we're going to get an FS seven, two replacement and an FS five, two replacement that the FS seven, yes. two replacement is going to come earlier than the FS five, two replacement. Um, I've heard full frame and not a lot more. And I want to know what would you like to see in that camera, uh, Caleb and Ben? Hmm. Well, it sort of feels cause I, I did see that rumor and read the spec sheets or, you know, the, the, what people were suspecting, I guess, was going to come, and obviously we've no idea. But it would seem to me that Canon have somewhat pissed on Sony's chips, unless I can't see what else they're going to come up with. It. <laughs> unless, that. unless it never heard that unless before. It's <laughs> French fries, I guess, or mm. whatever you call them. Uh, it's a good. It's a good thing. It's funny when you said that, by the way, Ben, that the stream got all messed up and it actually garbled what you said. It was almost oh, like nice. I applied the filter. So there you go. All right. <laughs> okay. So. Bearing in mind what Canon have done this week, mm. I think for Sony to bring out anything that's that, that's going to be anything, uh, I, I guess, with an edge on it, is it's going to have to be a similar kind of spec. And we know that Sony pushed the spec all the time. We know that they've got the the Ibis stuff that they've been they've done full frame <laughs> before. It's the is largest fly. That insect? It's the largest fly I've ever seen in my life that's flying behind my, oh my God, it is, it is, it is this big. It is, it's coming to get me. All right, sorry. Everybody thinks I'm crazy because they can't see it, but go back to what you were saying, Ben, I apologize. <laughs> that's really throwing me off track. Um, what I was getting at is that the, we know that Sony have already been pushing into all those technologies before. It was a surprise to us that Canon have gone and brought all that stuff out in one camera all of a sudden, because that's not really what they do. Sony do do this, so we know that all that stuff's going to be in it, whatever it is. The, the interesting thing and the unknown, I think, for me, is the price point. And that's, that's yeah. to me, the, wh where is the, that's where it's going to compete with the, the Canon. Hmm. What, do you, what do you two think? Well, I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to Caleb right now. I mean, I, this is all out of my uh, research and expertise, but... Um, Jim and I were on the phone talking about it and how traditionally that Sony's, you know, a little lower with that stuff. But 
you're right. Like what? I wish I could have been in the room when they saw the announcement, the Sony guys, mm -hmm. you know, and I wonder if there's scrambled meetings right now. Like, do we change the. No, the price. That's what they're going to be changing. Yeah. I mean, from what they originally were going to do, you know, mm. because yeah. I don't know. Canada just threw it all at the wall, right? It's insane. Yeah. But let's, okay. So historically, when we look at the FS7, FS7 II product, even with the extension unit, we're looking at many thousands of dollars less than you are for the C500 Mark II. So mm -hmm. they tend to float with an extension unit at about $12,000 US and their base products about $10,000 US. So if they came out with an FS7 III, FX9, whatever it's going to be called, and that camera in the next couple of days gets announced and it's let's just say it's let's just say it's $10,000 US. Right. Let's say it's full frame. And let's say they finally put their AF system that they're using in the A7 III and the future unicorn camera into this camera. Um, yeah. How would we feel? I, I mean, their battery solution is basically as good as Canon's. They have, you know, built-in yeah. battery. They have batteries that you can put into the camera body without going V-mount lock. And the only real advantage that you get besides some ProRes stuff and raw out when you add the extension unit, which is obviously an advantage of the Canon, the raw outs right on the camera body, is um, you get a, a couple of really important things. Um, one of them is all of your extra ports for gen lock and time code and stuff like that, right? Um, yeah. So, so if they build that into the body and then they've got full frame in that AF system, what happens to people's perceptions of the C500 Mark II? I mean, I know how I feel about it, but that's, I, I want to kind of get your take on it. Well, I, I, Sky makes an interesting and very valid point about industry workhorses. Um, so the C200, because of its lack of a 10-bit internal codec, has not been taken on. By broadcast, as I'm on lots of WhatsApp groups of cameramen in uh, the north of the UK, and um, it's kind of a, a job sharing group, and a lot of that, it's always asking for FS7. Hmm. It's pretty much, I would say, eighty percent of posts. That's what they're hmm. after. Operator with FS7, hmm. and that's broadcast. That's broadcast work. So that that is. Um, that is the standard. So for Canon to try and make inroads into that, even though the spec's going to be there now, um, that's tricky, I guess, because you're going to have broadcasters who've got all the media, all the batteries, and if they continue on with those same formats that they've been using in the FS series, hmm. I'm not sure how the inroads that they're going to make. But at the same time, I'm not sure that Sony are going to appeal to, say, the kind of aspiring cinematographer in the same way that the Canon will. So I think there's, there's a differentiation between those two brands and who they appeal to. Mm. Um, I don't know, I don't know. And, and the, um, the updated FS7, the color on it's getting pretty good now. It's yeah, definitely I mean, a huge improvement of the, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice image of it. So I, I don't mm. know. And I think the price will have a lot to do with it, but exactly as, as um, the Sky was saying, I think that there is, a big saturation of the FS series in broadcast, particularly in Europe. I don't know about the US, um, that Canon w would have a, a tougher time cracking into, particularly if Sony come out and this thing is that kind of spec and it's going to be 10 grand and the AF's good. I mean, don't you think, though, I mean, at least in the US, I see a split between C300 Mark II and FS7 series, for sure. I think that there's definitely both of those cameras working. I think the biggest problem with the FS7 series, in my opinion, and don't forget they have that very ND system, which is amazing, is, is. Uh, Caleb, don't you think that the, um, that the thing about Canon, yes, color science, but the thing that's been crippling the C300 Mark II is uh, the frame rate issue. And they've got the frame rates coming into this C500 Mark II now that I think are, you know, giving people, most people, what they would want. So now it's really a decision of do I spend a few thousand dollars more 
um, for that color science and for what Canon's going to give me. I mean, what's your opinion on that, Caleb? I mean, uh, again, like, I haven't really, I've used those cameras here and there, but this is definitely more of a you guy, you guys conversation. But yeah, Canon like always has been kind of weak on the frame rate and resolution combos. Yep. But whatever they do have in the camera is like gold every single time. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yep. my gosh, I just saw it fly across the frame. It's so big. You're going to have to you look at no the idea. playback on that. It was like half the size of your head. It's like um, gigantic. Love so it. Yeah. Uh, Sony has always been more, uh, had a lot more exciting stuff going on there. So but. let me, let me, let me shift. I want to pivot a little bit here. Um, there's a product that you do know a lot about, or at least, you know, um, you can talk a little bit about before I actually die and I'm eaten by the largest fly ever. It's probably been in here for 10 years or something. Um, and that's the uh, Deity XDTX which is this new uh, wireless solution that they've, um, you know, that they've announced. Can you tell us a little bit about what that product is? Um, yeah. So DD has this new, it looks like uh, almost very similar to that form factor of the, what is it called? The road news shooter kit transmitter, mm -hmm. that little brick. Plug, plug, yeah. Plug on transmitter, plug right on transmitter. So yep. uh, similar. There's thing. another name for it too, but we won't say that on the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so this thing from Didi, it uh, can tra or transmit, obviously. Uh, XLR provides phantom power, uh, but it also has a recorder built in and a headphone jack, which is kind of interesting. So mm. uh, in theory, you could slap it on the end of a boom pole, plug your headphones in, and you can monitor away from your audio bag and record if you want and transmit. So... You know, remains to be seen. DD has some kind of struggles with noise on their receiver. It's it's a it's not a super quiet system, hmm. um, but they compensate with it by having really really uh, loud, if you will, or sensitive microphones and whatnot. So yeah, we'll have to you know see what it's like. But I mean, I think that's going to be wonderful for kind of that uh, entry to intermediate range and the recorder is great that's really really fun so okay so uh, so 250 dollars too that's the other thing i was going to ask that's what the price point is. is yeah is and there any use it without anything else is there any rumor that they're also because i guess the the problem with that is that you could do you could do a wired xlr lavalier to that product and you could pocket that um, and then have the built-in recorder, but it's a it's a form factor, and it's a product that's primarily designed for putting boom style mics, shotgun mics, onto it. Right. right. But you, there is. I forgot to mention also, there is a uh, three point five millimeter input, so you could okay. you throw this in your pocket and then thread on whatever uh, Sennheiser style threaded microphone you want. I'll, uh, oh, does it have I'll a throw... belt clip? Does it have a belt clip uh, or anything? I'm not like sure, actually. There's the link. I don't know if that showed up or not for people. Because what chat. I'm trying to figure out is uh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So that means that you could put a threaded um, lavalier on there as well. So it basically Absolutely. has an it has an XLR and that. So so in theory, either they or somebody else could create something with a belt clip, and it would be a a slightly unconventional form factor for a uh, body pack transmitter, but it could absolutely be used for that. So right. it's, it's kind of like slim. a glorified one of those, uh, one of those Tascam DL, DL well, that's, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yep. 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 Um, good. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, micro SD, which, you know, eh. yeah, full Small, one, yeah, but it's, yeah. Yeah. She's nuts is sick. Drinking a, a, a two point, a, a, a a 249 euro brewski called dealer's best. There you go. Well, that'll, that'll work. Um, good. Well, if you keep drinking that beer, shiz nuts, then you can definitely afford this new uh, deity XDTX for sure. So let's get into some other conversations, gentlemen. Uh, mm -hmm. Should we, should we bounce to, should we go lighting first or should we talk about the other event that happened yesterday? From the fruit company. Nah. Go Which on one? if we must. Hey, look. Which one? Oh, geez. Uh, let's do lighting. Let's okay, let's do lighting. 
All right. Uh, okay. So <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to the Huawei ripoff in a little bit. Did you guys have a couple more drinks? Ben? <laughs> Should we talk a little bit about? Um, did you guys look up a, a, anything about this Roto Light Titan X2? Uh, yes. At least a little bit. Okay. Yes. Uh, so well, I I I know Tim at Roto Light um, and was talking to him at NAB and he was kind of hinting at what that was going to be a little bit when I was talking to him. Not, I know any specifics about it, but he was saying that they had this product in development and seeing what's in there in terms of the, the output from it or what they're claiming the output is on it is pretty huge for yeah. that sort of two by one form factor. Um, Apparently the hugest. The hugest, I believe, in a two by one. Mm -hmm. Hugest mm -hmm. output. Yeah. Yes. The hugest output. So if you look at the, the base specs of it, it's quite similar to, um, to quite a few other fixtures, I would say, but with that really high output. And it's also, um, you can spot and flood it somehow. Right. Yeah, really? so it has a... It, it, almost, it, it almost sounds like it has um, not only a lens focusing system inside of it, which is pretty cool for a panel display. Oh my God, it's so big. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, it's coming. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> they, but it's ridiculous. It's literally this large. Um, it's crazy. So, um, it, but it also has some sort of um, diffusion inside of it. So I, we keep hearing like every single year, the active diffusion that's coming out from um, uh, Xylite, right? Yeah. And um, and and then it never. And then again, I just saw a press release that it's going to be shown at IBC. Can we see an actual shipping product with the active diffusion? It's really cool. I love it. But this apparently has a tunable diffusion. And actually, there's a company that's going to be part of the Mac group that has something similar to this. When you look at the LEDs, it's completely clear, and you can see them clearly. And then you change the mode, and it's uh, essentially, essentially um, very different. But it starts to add diffusion electronically to the front of the fixture. So I think that this... Um, this Titan is going to be an interesting product to check out. What what were your thoughts on it, Caleb, when you looked at some of the specs on it and things like that? Uh, I think it's also fairly pretty affordable for what it is. Yeah. I mean, for Rotolite too, because I, I I don't know anyone at Rotolite, but uh, mm. I've always been pretty unimpressed with, from a strictly video or cinema uh, perspective, what their lights are up to. Mm. They're like really expensive just mediocre lights. Well, but they're tough I, I think, and they're, you know, and they're, yeah. they have flash capabilities and depending on how you use them. Um, they've always lacked the output, I think. Right. For, for, for the size of the fixtures, they've always, they've never had the output that you would need them to have to warrant lugging that thing around. That's mm -hmm. always been my experience of using them. I have used them before. Mm -hmm. um, they've sent me stuff before and I've got really nice results with them. And I like the lights, but they just, they don't have the power that something that size and weight would need to have. So yeah. it's it, so this seems to have have solved that problem. It seems to be a, an interest. It's the full full RGB WW light. It's it's that kind of um, that series of products that are based on what a sky panel is, I suppose. Mm. That lots of manufacturers are going after. But if if that's more output in the same form factor, same sort of weight, and at a good price point, it's it's a really interesting product. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'm always impressed with a company that is um, – Gem's setup is a house of horrors. <laughs> they were unsettled a mannequin in the background, and now the giant fly. Hey, you know, it's an unfinished space. You got to do what you got to do. We're content creators here. I'm letting you see behind the curtain. You think it's pretty when we do real production? It's It only matters what you see on camera. I'm just letting the, you in. The, the mannequin in the background. Yeah, you didn't watch last week's episode. Fine. Okay, whatever. <laughs> no, I did. Barn the thing of horror. <laughs> a barn of horror. <laughs> Give me a break. So what I like about, thank you, Rotolite is doing, what I like about the company is that they're actually putting some features into the fixture that we're not seeing in other fixtures. I saw a post the other day, which I had a little back and forth with somebody, and I didn't dislike the product, but it was essentially an S uh, S60C, um, but it had the same color scheme as a sky panel. 
um, a lot less money, you know, and I'm sure it's a good product. But what I really love is when I see a company take something and they add something to it that you're not seeing in somebody else's product. And I think that's what's really interesting about this Titan X2 is that you're seeing these lens focusers. What's going on down there, Caleb? You're get, yeah, you think Nothing, I'm going to get I'm just reading the comments. Reading? Oh my God. Don't, <laughs> oh my God. We're dealing with scorpions. Um, very amazing. Okay. It's just crazy. Oh my God. All right. You ready? So, um, so we, uh, we have some new things in there, but then we have this airy orbiter light. Yeah. Did you guys read a little bit about that? I mean, I'm not saying bit. you and I or any of the, oh, the three of us are only going to use that light if we get on a job and we're renting that light right now, whatever the price sure. is going to be. Um, but what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, it kind of interesting. Again, it's exactly as you say, it's that interesting thing that you'll get your hands on maybe at some point. But yeah, having that form factor, which is, so this, this is a, um, I guess a lot of the features of a sky panel in terms of the contra controllability of the light, but the form factor, it's, so this is a more of a, uh, a, a directional light mm -hmm. um, with an awful lot of an awful lot of tech in. There's no indication on price point on it yet, I believe. Mm. I haven't no. read anything that's given any kind of indication on price point. Um, and do they have different versions of it? Because I read a very brief synopsis of the spec on there. No. Not, no, not that I can tell. Um, what did you see, uh, Caleb? I don't think there's a different version. I think it is I the Airy Orbiter. Yeah, but I I didn't dive deeply into it. Um, I just can't get over how it's it looks exactly like for anyone who plays video games. Uh, Halo, the game Halo, the Orb or uh, Guilty Spark. <laughs> it's literally identical in every single way can to you that get a robot. Picture and post it? Can you post it, please? Uh, yeah, if you just, it just just type in Guilty Spark and go to Google Images. I promise you won't see anything sketchy because it's <laughs> Halo's like such a big game. It literally is dominating everything. But it's it's exactly the same. Guilty Spark Halo. If you Google it right now, oh you're going to see the area light. Look at light. that. That is out of control. Is there something else? That's amazing. So anyway, awesome. I think it's really exciting. Like it's a new, it's like a new form factor. You know, it's not. It's a it's brand not a Fresnel, it's new like old school. No. It's not an open face. It's not a panel. Mm -hmm. Um, because I mean, I don't know about you guys, but you know, it's great that we have so many options. But the amount of like two by one, uh, sky panel knockoffs out there, just that whole yeah. form factor is just old, clunky, and not that this is gonna be not clunky. But it's just really interesting because it's kind of a new, it's like a camera, but a lens, a light. Yeah. And it's funny when they first showed it, I was like, oh, here's this cute little fixture. But then they cut to a person picking it up. And, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a real thing. It's 33 pounds. But the thing to understand about that fixture is every single thing that that light does is built into it except for one cord that goes to mains. So it's a power cord that goes to mains, and that's it. So the whole thing is uh, one. It's completely weatherproof. It's like they said, it's waterproof, the whole light. And it has um, the controller built into the back, and then it detaches. It's not wireless. It's a wired controller. But it's a beast. I will predict, and I've said it a couple of times over the last day, that that will be the hottest rental light in the industry. So if you're a rental house and you deal with Griffin Electric, you better be pre-ordering. No matter what that pre-order price is, just order them because somebody else is going to be renting those uh, fixtures if you're not. It's, uh, it's going to be wildly successful. And what I'm really interested in is what HMI equivalent light is it equivalent to that's what i really want to know It'll, of course uh depend on what modifier you're using in terms of beam angle but that's going to be interesting because then you wonder is there going to be an orbiter xl one day or are they mm. seriously just going to have the orbiter because they've showed in the uh keynote they actually showed they've already built a frame where you can do four up on them so you can do four of them together Ooh. so then you're getting four times the output of that fixture and it's apparently a tilt and pan frame. So you can have four of them in there, but they could be pointing in different directions out of that one frame. 
So um, and, I think, huh? Go tell and me. And it has USB C. It's impressive. It is. It's going to be pretty, pretty amazing, I think. So, and none of us will buy it, but it's going to be uh, yeah. out of control. And hopefully, one day, I'm going to be able to create some educational content around it. We'll see what happens. Um, oh, now people are waking up in the chat. There you go. Now that the fly left, um, you know, I you love so know anyway. What you also know that by NAB next year, there's going to be five knockoffs, quality knockoffs of that. Yeah, well, they'll be in the same form factor or, or housing, they're not going to be quite the same ecosystem, and that's the big difference. I think yeah. the big news, though, is that it's a waterproof light. I mean, you yeah, know, you yeah. don't you don't take a sky panel out in a storm. So this light is going to be. Is it like uh, underwater level? I don't know. Like, they had a pretty hard rain on it. around with some flippers. I don't know up. about that with those back ports for DMX and stuff, unless they basically have some sort of you know thing that they can plop on there. But yeah. I will tell you that it's going to water be, out of it. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people using that thing. Yeah. In a, you're talking about power or the output. They, have they published much on that? Not much. I do know that it's a four to 500 watt draw. Yeah. So it's like a max 500, 500 max. watt draw. So um, depending how efficient it is, and it looks like it's got a big display and stuff, so it's going to chew up some of that wattage. Hmm. So, yeah. They're Which getting, you know, the, the guy behind the LED technology on that light, though, has been in the industry for 20 years, I think, just with LEDs, but not in this I mean, industry. I know him, and he is like, you know, he's one of the godfathers of um, engineering when it comes to LED technology. So I know that they've rebuilt this thing from the ground up, and I'm sure there's a lot of efficiency. It'll be really interesting to see what this thing really does in the real world. So I'm excited about it. And I don't think that they're going to kill their whole HMI business right now. You know, there's there's going to be some of those 20K lamps that I don't think this is going to have the same output of. But it's going to be when you talk about small to medium sized production and then you talk about going into sound stages and all of that stuff. I mean, this thing's going to be a, a beast. And it's still I mean, they have shown exterior stuff where it's being used through a window in full daylight. I just don't know if it's going to be once you push it through a modifier, a big modifier, if it's going to have enough juice. But four of them together, for sure, you know, and uh, it should be pretty interesting. Um, what did you guys see that you were um, excited about from the announcements besides what we've talked about? Is there anything else that you want to just chime in about? Um, or do we want to get into some of the comments here as we get into our last 10 minutes? Uh, why don't you guys jump in and, and take that? Yeah. Um, Ben, do you got anything? To be honest, if I not. think we've covered most of the stuff that I've spotted. So if there's something you've got, go for it. Oh, just, come on, Caleb, talk I, about I, that. I, I don't know a lot, a lot, but there's a couple okay. like lens, interesting lens, nothing crazy, but one company's coming out with uh, anamorphic lenses just for micro four thirds, which is kind of interesting. Oh, really? Oh, somebody um, asked about that earlier today. So what is that? What company? I just and what barely are saw. I have to pull it up here. I think it's on Cinema 5D. It's some okay. Chinese company, but um, Ben okay. and I or Jim and I were talking, and lenses are going to get really interesting. Oh, oh, here it is, Vazen, Vazen, V A. I'll put a oh, yeah. thing. But, it's a um, forty mil, um, forty mil T two for micro four thirds. Right, one point eight X. That's uh, interesting. The Did three, they say how much it's going to cost? Um, let me search for the dollar symbol here. Nope, not yet. Apparently, okay. oh, wait. Price tag of three grand. Oh, how much are the Atlas? They're a lot more than that, but uh, seven ish. Yeah, but they're they're they go much larger. They, Which they're I really six. want and super don't need, but really want after having used uh, one for the first time for a while. Are they thirty five millimeter or are they full frame? The Atlas. Um, it depends, right? Uh, on the lens and, and all kinds of different. Oh, okay. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not yeah, quizzing it's you. Super I'm thirty-five asking. for the most part, but it's it's okay. it's. I they, didn't know. They definitely work on full frame, depending on stuff. How what so, kind of open gate you're doing on it. So to make Ben cringe a little bit, what are your thoughts on the iPhone 11 Pro and this whole filmic Pro thing, and and your thoughts on where things go with this in terms of um, smartphones, Caleb? Uh, well, I'm I'm still using an iPhone 7, so I'm very excited about this uh, 
phone. Um, and, you know, I'm sure like he was mentioning, like they stole stuff from other companies. But if you're an Apple person, you honestly don't care. Because right. You're just, well, this is what I do and what I buy. But uh, I think the Filmic Pro is really exciting. The fact that it can record mm. from multiple camera angle, from multiple cameras or the lenses yes. all at once. Yes. Including your selfie cam, right? I, I don't know saw about that. that. But I mean, the fact that you could, not that it'd be kind of weird to do, but it'd be, it's, cool i like that idea it's really really interesting and um like we've talked about here in the show in the past when it comes to like the future of everything uh that that's eventually potentially where we're going where you don't buy an atlas or a cook lens you you scroll through it on your camera and select it and yeah it algorithmically uh puts it together so yeah uh it's really interesting so i'm i'm probably going maybe going to probably pick one up and uh put it through its paces see what that looks like so sorry. how long do you guys think it's going to be until we get essentially portrait mode for video on smartphones do you think we're a year away or do you think we're two or three years away from being able to do real time um you know aperture changes simulated aperture changes in video mode with smartphones oh, I, I think we've we got to be close we move so fast i couldn't tell you you're blacked yeah, out, my okay. friend, Caleb. Uh oh. Yeah. What's going on? Are you using some of those battery. little Nuvo cameras? Battery. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to plug in my USB on my my Fuji. <laughs> well, uh, carry on. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> let's, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's a little creepy. So David said, "Shoot me your email, and we'll exchange mannequin photos." That's never going to happen, David. So. That's the end of that conversation. I'm saying yeah. it out loud to everybody. That's a done deal. I know you're joking, but I'm just being silly. Yeah. Rem um, remind me next time we're drinking somewhere, actually in person, and I'll tell you the story about when I used to work in a camera shop and the this guy brought in a set of photographs to be developed. They featured one of the people featured was it was a mannequin doll. I'll tell you that story when we're not in here. Oh my goodness! It's amazing. Uh Oh my goodness. Caleb, can it's we amazing. still hear you or not? <laughs> Caleb, are you still with us in voice? No. No, he's he's gone. But Jeb, Sorry. did you see the, Sorry, the the battery, the um the battery for the C series of cameras? Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I, I love that. So there's um we've got the the new batteries that are coming out. I think it's at the end of the year, isn't it? That they're coming yeah, out. I there's one, and I can't remember the brand. There's a cheaper, Core less SWX. well known brand. Uh -huh. Yeah, so Core, Core SWX are doing. So, so that's the quality one that's coming out that I would trust. There's also one that people have been using on some of the C200 forums, uh, which have the proper connections. You're not going out to a DTAP and then into the DC in. <laughs> yeah. But apparently it's working and there's been no problems. So Good. we'll see. We're talking about the new batteries cheap. from Core SWX for the. Uh, C300 Mark II, right. C500 Mark II. They have uh, uh, P taps. They have a USB port in them. Uh, I amazing. wish I had USB C. That would be beautiful. Come on, but you can't ask for yes. everything. Uh, but I think it's fantastic. What do you think, Caleb? We love batteries. Electronics. I mean, core. Core SW, w. Core w X. Don't say that. There's gonna be a lawsuit. Come on. <laughs> oh, geez. Jesus, what are you uh, doing? I don't know. You know way know. too much. Come on, stop. <laughs> Um, um yeah super hmm. cool no batteries 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 and audio i, I love seeing advances there because there's so many cool things you can do so many so, it's yeah. been beautiful i love hanging out with you guys i'm so glad we get to do this every week i'm so glad everybody shows up and they're part of the chat um it's a it's a great thing i feel in my heart that this is where we should end off we can have a, a minute or two to talk about next week um i think we mm -hmm. might inevitably have to talk about whatever's announced by sony for mm. sure that'll definitely yes. take up a good 20 to 30 minutes next week um i think we should maybe see what other announcements maybe we'll do a part two and then i think two weeks from now gentlemen it would be a really good time for us to have a challenge loved your video yes. uh, i love that you're doing the two thousand uh, dollar studio video this week uh caleb so yes. everybody check that out um, if you're interested in the Aperture Spotlight, you can check out the video I did last week. Mannequin and all, it's not creepy. <laughs> Except, come on, give me a break, guys. I keep saying this. 
Um, it's first of all, it's not a real doll, okay? It's just a mannequin. And no, you the, just you blow it up. You, you, it's fine. Jim, you you've lost it when you call it a doll. You it when you it's don't. not it's a fine. real doll. When you say that, then it's over. No, that's that's what <laughs> you guys are unbelievable. <laughs> it's um, the cheaper version that you blow up. The real doll is just it's, it's not it's oh, all the time. unbelievable. What I'm saying <laughs> is, if <laughs> okay, you guys go ahead and get a styrofoam head and learn lighting, okay? But if you want to actually sit down and learn your craft, it might help. Okay. You guys are unbelievable. <laughs> I'll go back to the fly now. You make some okay. friends. And, you know, and have David, them David I'm, not shooting your, I'm not shooting me. I'm not shooting my email to you. If you have American <laughs> photos, David, I don't ever want to see those. Okay. Because if you're happy to share them, I don't know what's going on. Um, there we go. Awesome. Look, it keeps things going. I don't even. I just saw an old video from Jem without a beard. That was kind of creepy. Not really. Uh, even though my kids say I look so much better with a beard. And let's just go back to Caleb's uh, cowboy <laughs> studio rig while we're at it. Can oh, we post geez. that thumbnail to get me out of this one? I feel like we're digging the hole pretty deep. It's okay. I have three kids, guys. I don't care. I'm not embarrassed about anything. We can go down any path you want i just don't want to be demonetized or taken off of this you know platform Go just ahead. you know there was no judgment there it was just you know an observation i know it's okay <laughs> that's what we do here at cameron flask uh there goes any endorsements or any other videos that i'll ever do in the future it's been <laughs> nice knowing everybody there goes and, your uh, orbit there goes my <laughs> my orbit orbit review <laughs> Yeah, I've just lost out on every single product I'll ever do. You guys are unbelievable. You're I welcome. won't act because, you know, it's all out of love. Okay, uh, gentlemen, it's 4.01 here on the West Coast, which means that it is 6.01 in the central part of the United States. And it means that we are, are you in the Czech Republic uh, in Prince's house? It is 1.01 a.m. for Mr. Ben Barden. Everybody, good night. Hey, Thank legend. you very much. Gentlemen, figure it out. Uh, Caleb, get a bike and get a drink. And that's all I have to say. And uh, let me find the thing that lets me end the uh, stream. It's get been a pleasure. Fly <laughs> yeah. Everybody say goodbye. Caleb, your goodbye. Uh, thank you all uh, for joining us. Uh, appreciate you, even if you uh, use mannequins. It's good stuff. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> so messed up. Again, go ahead, Ben. You give a final dig while we're at it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm just going to say thank you very much again. This is always an enormous amount of fun. And next week we may have, well, if the connection allows, we might have one of our regulars in the chat actually with me. Ooh. Ooh. So we might have Jay go with me. The, the two, two of us are working together and we're, we're actually sharing a room all week next week. So that'll be less awkward if we're doing something other than trying to sleep nice. there's some comments here that never unbelievable uh love you guys <laughs> it was a pleasure i gotta get off this thing and end this stream before it gets really ugly and all the best see you guys next week all right bye Thanks, right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's oh happening here i don't know it says it's ending the